Welcome to the Chop Team. I'm your host, Seth the Dark Child. I'm your host, Twin Zinc. Our show is about two guys and any friends that happen to come over with a topic that we want to chop up. This is our barbershop style podcast. We discuss it all. If the fellas at the shop will go in on it, we will. Let's chop it up. What's going on, good people? Seth the Dark Child, how you doing, my brother? Ah, brother, I'm blessed. Been a long, hard day at work, but it's over. All right, I know the feeling. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? So, today is Tuesday, right? Tuesday. What's going on? Well, we had an episode that we dropped on Monday, which Seth the Dark Child is going to tell you what it was. And then we got some response over the night, uh, last night. So, I was like, you know what? Let's talk about it in a little bit, little bit more in depth. So you may see me wearing a red shirt because I'm choosing violence today, not <laughs> physical, but violence today. Seth the Dark Child, he's yeah. he's he's he's, too, he's tapped in, but he's online because he's at the crib doing his thing. So Seth the Dark Child, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna let you start out for us, and we'll get right into it. Well, you know the show the show in question, the title was "If You Destroy the Patriarchy, What Is the Plan to Replace?" Right, mm-hmm. and we chopped that up like you know, if you do take control of the country or whatever, and as a society, if you do take control of it, what's your plan to to fix it? The matriarchy that that was your plan, right? That was, that <laughs> and, was their um, plan. Mm-hmm. And, and one of our one of our listeners who listen, regardless of what I say out of my mouth, I do love you. <laughs> thank you for being a subscriber and thank you for listening. We appreciate it. Yes, we do appreciate um, it. Yeah, they, 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 they made a response. They, they they asked a hard question. And this question is a pretty big um, question or response. It was too big to just one sentence. This deserved an entire response video. Yeah. Right? Yes. So that's where we're at all right now. So I just want to rebut a few. I want to put up back on the table um, a response to some of the points that she raised. Okay. Right. All right. So, so, so before getting to it, tell them tell them mm-hmm. the title of the show as well, so they know what we're talking about today. It's it's really in response to the first thing you said. Well, yeah. Well, the the title of the show specifically is um, why why the matriarch doesn't work. That's what this, what we're doing today. Why the matriarch the way the matriarchy doesn't work. And while I'm not I think I could riff riff off the top of my head on that particular topic. But no, we're gonna we're gonna keep the show focused on direct responses to comments that were submitted. Yes. Is that cool? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Now bear in mind Mo, this is off the top of my head. A few of my, if I throw out stats and figures, they may be a little bit off per se, but you can do the research. What I will not say is anything as factual that you can't go out and prove for yourself. Okay? Got it. All right. Um, I mean, she, she put a, there was a lot into this comment. Um, I'm, I'm going to read it. I'm going to read it word for word, but I'm not going to try to read it straight through because if we need to unpack something, Mm -hmm. we're going to unpack. Okay. Go ahead. All right. All right. So it begins. Um, You know men rule the world, right? So if men lost their identity, they did so under y'all rule. I'm assuming y'all meaning men's rule, right? Right. You can't blame feminism and, and... We ain't even the ones in charge. So, you can't blame feminism, and we ain't even the ones in charge. You know, we're gonna we're gonna unpack that. You did you feel did you feel where she was going with that? Yeah, yeah, I do. I mean, mean, I understand what you said. Yep. Okay. Um. Okay. So, just the the world. Me and rule the we rule the world, so it's our fault. Gotcha. So deflection. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, set the trap. I got something for that one. Oh, <laughs> deflecticon. Ah, there you go. There you go. Go ahead. Continue, sir. Yeah. So I, I feel that the first, 
I feel, listen to that. Yeah. The first portion of this conversation was a straight set of deflection. All the way. You know, the, you know me and rule the world, right? So right. if men lost their identity, they did so under y'all rule, meaning um, men lost their way because we did it. You can't blame feminism, and we ain't even the ones in charge. Okay. All right, so taking that, un- taking that with a grain of salt. I will own up to this as a man. Yeah, we messed up. We messed up. What we did. What we do, Seth. With, when we heard feminism, we heard women whining. Okay. And complaining about how bad it was to be a woman, how messed up it was, how unfair it was. And since we cared about women, seriously, we tried to, get, we tried to make you guys happy. We didn't put any, and I say we as in men, because black people back at that time were still slaves, but men in general, because I happen to have a team. Um, we listened to your complaint. We heard what you said, and there was some validity to it. So what happened was we tried to fix the imbalance that we saw. But we did it from a, we did it from a place of ignorance. We forgot that you really can't make a woman happy. Mm. We we forgot that the more you give to a woman, the more she wants. She's insatiable like that. She's spoiled. You really can't give a woman enough stuff in certain situations to satisfy her. The more you give her, the more she's going to want. Right? So we didn't put any stipulations on the stuff we gave you either. You got the right to vote without having to fight for it, a.k.a. civil being in the draft or, you know, civil service registration. You didn't have to fight for any of that. We gave you, you want, we gave you jobs. Oh, well, you were able to go out and get jobs, but we, but we knew you couldn't do the same jobs we did for the most, for the most part. Mm-hmm. So you got the, you got the jobs in the offices with the AC, right? right. Cool. You know, somebody got a type. We didn't want to type. You were willing to type. So women invaded those women invaded those spaces that were before there weren't any women at. That's fine. Welcome to the world of working. Now you know what it feel like to make money and earn money as a man. But you had no intention, even though you wanted the freedom, you had no intention of shouldering the burden of being an adult. That never happened. So you got the freedom that you whined about. We men, because we wanted to make you happy, we foolishly didn't even put any requirements on nothing that we gave you. We gave it freely because we loved you. And when I say gave freely, we built washing machines, we built vacuum cleaners, we built stoves that work inside the house. We built AC to make it comfortable inside the house. We built ice boxes so that you didn't have to um, struggle to keep food cool and all that. All this stuff women used to do. All this stuff y'all used to have to do manually by hand. We got to the point where male doctors, male doctors made it safer for you to have children. You know how many women used to die in childbirth? Now you're down to like one in 10,000. I'm not saying it's right. I'm saying it's it's better, right? Right. Much better. um, Even even maxi pads and stuff like that. Let's be honest. Men invented those. Women didn't invent sanitary napkins. But we did it because we loved you guys. Fast forward. But we forgot that you can't satisfy somebody who's unappreciative. Mm. You can't. The more you got, the more you wanted, year after year, decade after decade, and that's where we're here. So now, while just to go right back to the point, now this is my opinion going forward, but I think you need to understand some things. Um, Men rule the world, so if they lost their identity, they did so under y'all rule. You can't blame feminism, and we ain't even the ones in charge. That was your statement. Here's the problem with that statement. We are still in charge as men. This is misogynistic, if you want to call it that way. We are in charge as men. And men fix problems. They don't just wallow in problems, whining all day about a problem. Come up with solutions. When we see a problem, Mm -hmm. yeah, we're going to come up with solutions to that problem. And guess what? My, my opinion is um, you push the envelope too far, the people who are in charge tend to slap you on your wrist. That's called discipline. <laughs> so 
I'm not even going to go further down that road, but I just want you to hear what you said. You, you, you got this, you know, it's a problem. And instead of saying, yeah, we need to, we need to rein this in before the people in charge who you put in writing decide to take an active hand and fixing a problem. And, and, and for few, huh? Go ahead, fin- finish your statement there. Go ahead, finish your statement. Oh, I, I was about to go off on the biblical tip. All right. A okay, well, hold on, pause for a second. And ladies and gentlemen, yes, I want you to understand that if you listen to the episode that, we, that was released on Monday, on it's on YouTube, it's on uh, Apple, iTunes, Spotify, iHeart, all the podcast platforms. But if you pay attention to the conversation that Seth the Dark Child had, he was in his car with a lady and his son. They were driving. Mm-hmm. And they and he sat there quiet in the vehicle and listened as they talked. And they was talking about how we need to destroy the patriarchy, right? So this is how this conversation mm-hmm. started. So it's not that the job team woke up one day and said, hey, what can we talk about now in, in, in bash woman? No, that's not what we do here. But what we I'm do here, what, well, I'm just saying, but, you know, some, I'm sorry, I'm, you know, me and you know we're not bashing, but some people don't understand that. So I'm, I'm going to be clear as day. Sometimes you got to talk to people as if they are C average student, because I was a C average student too as well. <laughs> but, okay. but I'm just, I, you know what I'm saying? I'm on a level set here. This conversation came from women talking about what they need to do to destroy it. So now we sat back and listened when Seth the Dark Child um, offered them or asked them, so what does it look like? They want to hurt and change the conversation. They want to talk about it. So that's how the conversation started. But Seth Darchow, you can continue on the biblical route you was going. <laughs> okay. Well, I just wanted I just wanted to point out this when you say that we started, we were in charge and all this. Listen, this this is just real talk. If anybody's religious, if you've ever read any holy text, look at the look at the history of the world. Mm-hmm. Men. Men who ran the world, who were in charge, we knew thousands of years ago that if we let women move the way they wanted to move, for real, whatever, that it would be problems. We knew this. The Bible is read is a red pill book. Just read the Bible. Oh my God, read Proverbs. You you will be shocked at what the Bible says about being married and having a woman in your life. All right. It's only in the last hundred years or so, maybe less, when we decided, oh, no, you know what? Obviously, the Bible is a backwards book written 2,000 years ago by scared old men who were afraid of change. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> Everything that they was talking about in the Bible and worried about happening in the Bible is happening right now. Mm. You you know, honestly, y'all, y'all, are, just, y'all are just as promiscuous as a man y'all y'all lie just as much as a man women female cheating is as high as men cheating female females trust in the relationship has fallen so far down the ladder that right now there's real talk about making sure you get a paternity test at every birth do you know how far down the ladder of trust you have to find i mean fall for the government to seriously be talking about making uh making it a law well, that because every man get, that, get that's, paternity tested. Yeah, hmm? because p- paternity scam is a big thing now. If ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't notice, it's and only that, but it's only one person who can lie about that. One, and it's not it's the only men. Person who can lie, and it's, it's not, not the men. And it's not the men. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> we we can argue that all the way, but paternity. It's only one person who can look a person straight in the eyes and say you the father and be lying when they say it. That's no you. accountability. But you're right. Once again, men are in charge and we run the road. Listen, you said it. I would like you to look a little bit further down the road than just the end of this conversation to what you just said. Think about what you said. And you know what happened when you mess up at work. I'm sure you got a job, right? Eventually, if that boss is a decent boss, if that boss is willing to actually be a boss and run his business, he will eventually, or she, whatever. They will eventually deal with the problem that they see in their business. You said it, not me. All right? Mm-hmm. So, that's just the first part. Once again, she, she threw a lot of stuff in here that needed to be unpacked. Go ahead, keep, keep going, right? sir. Okay. 
the next the, the next step was uh, once again I'm quoting I'm reading it says I gotta disagree with women splurging on y'all money instead of bills. My dad gave the money to his wife, so I'm assuming that's his, your mom, for her to pay the bills and get household stuff. As a matter of fact, all the bills were in her name. It was as if he didn't even know how to pay a bill, just to apply it. She didn't work because she, I mean, she didn't work only because daycare was more than she made. But she still did her weekend job when dad was home to help. Okay. Hold on, See, that Seth. That sounds reasonable. It, right, ahead. and it does. And it does. And, and, and before you go off, not go off, before you say what you have to say. I'm not going off on this. No, no, right. Well, Okay, I just want to say this, right? Mm-hmm. Our grandparents back then, like people, people. I want, I want you to understand, ladies and gentlemen, the whole uh, like slavery. Yeah, we did. We actually didn't wasn't part of slavery, but segregation. That's still another form of slavery, meaning that mm-hmm. our grandparents. Matter of fact, we, me and Seth Darchild, we were one lady at a job. She said she actually picked cotton. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She was actually yeah. in the field. And she got to yeah. be either 60 or in the 70s. So what I'm trying to tell you, that's not too far away. Now, she might she might didn't do it. It was probably by choice she did it. But the point I'm trying to make is it's not that far away. And segregation wasn't too far away. Not too long ago. No, no. But, no let, let me clarify because my own mother is not 70 yet. Go ahead. And as a, and as a child, she picked cotton. Okay, see, because that's what that's what you did in the fifties. So, so the the point, so the point with me saying that part there is this: mm-hmm. our men back then and women, we weren't that educated. If the people grew up in the fifties and sixties, maybe late seventies, they well, they're not seventies, but sixties, fifties, forties, whatever, they weren't that much educated. I want you to understand that back then, being a black man and being smart wasn't a, 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 a good thing to be able to do. But guess what? A lot of those black men who did not finish school or what they say now got a fourth grade education. Guess what? Those same men were the same one who worked every day and provided for their family. So regardless, yep. if he didn't know how to write a check, uh, pay a bill, he knew he had to go out there and make money so him, his family, and the kids can eat. Just want to put that mm-hmm. out there on the table. Because regardless who we're naming the bills is, who was the one giving the mom the money to pay the bills? Exactly. I just want to put that out there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, come on now. We live in different times now. Let's go. Yeah. Well, you know what? And, I, and I'm going to stay right where you're at. We live in different times now. Mm-hmm. But the problem being, ladies, I want y'all to hear this. You, I got to disagree with women splurging on y'all money instead of bills. Once again, own up to the fact that when it came to taking care of the family and caring about somebody other than women, than themselves, Women in the past were much better than they were now. Young, did you you saw that right? Yes. You you acknowledged the fact that I could trust. I could back seventy years ago. I could trust my grandmother and my great grandmother. I could trust them to handle the business for the family. Are you owning up to it in that statement that women of today are not capable of being trusted to do what's right for the family? I don't even have nothing else to go on that one because it, it, I can't be nicer. Is that you? I said it a little while ago. Look at how far down the ladder of trust, because we let women do what they wanted to do as far as feminism, and look how far down the ladder of trust you've fallen. I can't even do trust you to take care of the bills and do what's right for your family. I can't trust you to do that. That's where you're at. Mm. I, this next, I mean. Honestly, I I just I want to get off of that. No, but, no, yeah. you you can go ahead. I just want to make I just, <laughs> I just want to be clear when she, when she made that statement about her grandparents. I'm like, yeah, back in the 60s, 70s was different. But he's as well, the man, he still took care of the family, didn't exactly. he? Yeah. Well, okay then. So exactly. so who cares if he couldn't read or write or whatever? He knew how to go there and work hard for y'all, didn't he? Yes. All right then. So well, what's, what's the that, problem? That, that you. That used to be the measure of a man. Facts. Hey, provide for your family was the measure of a man. Now, here is that I'm glad y'all make your own money, but that that doesn't excuse, that doesn't excuse the fact that y'all can't be trusted to handle business for the family. It can't just be I'm getting the bag for myself. For the 
I've seen women, I've seen women walking around with two hundred dollar um, shoes on and three hundred dollar hairdos and weave and all that, and they kids walk around dirty and snot nose. That's a scene. You know what I'm saying? You, you, you chose to take care of yourself and try to make yourself. I, I'm gonna say it in the old days would have called it a harlot. <laughs> you dress up like a harlot with clown makeup on, and your child. You can't even run a comb through your child's head. The boy get them naps, nappity naps. Exactly, and I'm talking about boys and girls here. <laughs> I had a child. You got children, and your boy children are reading at a fourth grade level, and we're not even going to get down into the, to the mentality of that portion. Your kids reading at a fourth grade level in America, and and you got two hundred dollar weeds in your head that you maintain regularly. You go to the beauty salon for hours at a time to get your hair, nails, and feet done. What I seen an article the other day, at least 50 women a day are flying to Brazil in the Atlanta area, not some magical area. <laughs> right. Between 15 to 50 women a, per day are going to get Brazilian butt lift. And yet your children are reading on a fourth grade level. Can't blame that on the dude. Hey, mind you, hold you on, Seth. You, and, you, y'all, y'all flip it here. And mind you, Seth, we just did a show on this, right? Yes. You know what I'm saying? You're you dying to look beautiful, right? Exactly. Once again, a mother of three kids lost her life because she wanted she went to uh Mexico to get her a BBL and it turned really? south. Exactly. That wasn't for yeah. me, apparently. Who was I for? You're exactly. a mother of three kids. Exactly. So once again, this is me throwing out that these are just reasonable things you can think about for yourself. This ain't no deflection. And I'm I'm not the person like Twin Zeke right here. He actually is willing to give y'all the benefit of the doubt sometimes. He doesn't like busting your head, busting your side of the head with the truth. I find that whether you like it or not, the truth hurts. It's better to rip a Band-Aid off than to leave it on and take it off little bit by little bit. You guys are messing up. You, it ain't, when you talk about splurging on a man's money, that, that topic is so big, but too many of y'all revel in this foolishness. But we'll, we'll, we'll put a pin in that. I'm just saying, yeah, don't... I, I, I'm glad you feel a little bit bad, but you really got to start talking to your sister, not just feeling bad inside. Spread the word. Start a podcast. Tell them where they're going wrong. If you really feel bad, but just hoping they do right, we got a Bible that says you guys don't function well without hard rules. It's a Bible. It says it. Read Proverbs again, please. Okay. Point number three. <laughs> Just Wait, number three? We only on three? <laughs> yeah, anything else you want to add to this? Nah, go ahead. We, we'll couple. Good. Okay. Point number three. I may, maybe I should have added this to it, but let's see. Me personally, Always spend my money on bills or an investment of some kind. I respect that. I never had the experience of a man taking care of me, and there are many women in my situation. True. I don't know how old this person is, so I, I, I'm, but I'm not willing to let that slide. Because if you don't have the experience of a man taking care of you, that's your mother's fault. Mm. Okay, that's a choice your mother made. All right, so don't. I'm not owning no part of that. Men might have taken care of you as you learn to let a man take care of you, and you're never gonna learn to, how to let a man take care of you if you keep choosing men that are incapable of taking care of you. Which let me continue. <laughs> okay, as a matter of fact, more black men move in with black women than women with black men. Most of us are sadly taking care of. Y'all. Okay, pause. <laughs> um, more black. Let once again, if you ever looked at Kevin Samuels, you know the statistics. If you don't know the statistics, BlackDemographics.com. These are um, demographic statistics for black people by black people. These are our numbers. But you can also go to the Census Bureau. Heck, you could probably go to the FBI, and CIA website for this kind of information. It is public knowledge. Right, facts. More, sixty-four percent of all black men are above are in the middle class. Middle class 
middle class, I think, is $35,000 a year. Mm-hmm. Up okay. To... 64. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, go ahead. Continue. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. He said, so the average black man is making at least $30,000 a year. That ain't great. That's $15 an hour, but that ain't home. That's enough to pay a, that's enough to keep a roof over your head in a one bedroom apartment. Maybe a two bedroom, depending on where you live in most, in most places. Right? Okay. So 30, 35,000 a year is the average salary of a black man. 64% of us are able to do that on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. When you say most, I'm, I'm, I'm just owning up to the fact that you said most, more of us move in with y'all than the other way around. See, that's where you're wrong. And it, it comes here. Most of the men who you are choosing to be with, ladies, need you to live off of. And that's because multiple reasons, one of which you raise these men, or if not choosing your mothers. Once again, 80% of black children grow up in single parent households. 90 plus percent of which of those black holes are led by a single black woman. Okay, we only talking about black people. You created the men you just complained about. Mm. You you created them. Your mothers created them. Hey. Your, so that's your grandmamas created your the, the kids that created the kids that you are having to deal with right now. And let me um you did, you did it. Okay, let me add. I mean, let me add a little sprinkle on top of that, right? So, mm-hmm. as he stated, you have demographics dot com, black mm-hmm. demographics dot com. You have Kevin Samuel. You had mm-hmm. Fresh and Fit podcast. You mm-hmm. have the Real Deal versus How You Feel, and mm-hmm. me. I'm on that show with Miss I Speak Live. We had a conversation out here, and we try to provide some solutions for our men and women. And number one, women, ladies. You need to stop dating men based on potential. Okay? Number one. Fellas, if you're going to be in a situation where you might want to get married and start a family, here's three things you need to be able to do. Change her last name, change her lifestyle, and change her address. Meaning, fellas, well, no, ladies and fellas, Most men don't make the peak of their money until they're in the late 35 and up. Any man who's 18 years old up to 35 is not in a position to be able to take care of a family. Now, there's some out there. There's some guys out there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, nothing I'm saying is absolute. But what I'm saying, most men, me speaking twins, I I didn't make great money until I hit 35 plus. Once I hit 35 plus, I start making really good money. Now, of course, I have a family already, but the pump trying to make is this. If you're, if you're having babies with men, they're not in the late 35s, that's your fault. If he's living at home with his mama, that's your fault. If he's catching a bus, that's your fault. If he has a, a base job like McDonald's or something, Walmart, I ain't knocking those jobs because I did that when I was 16. Mind you, when I was 16. That's my first job I had, you know what I'm saying? If the men mm-hmm. doesn't, like, honestly, because here's a problem that we have in the black community. You know what I'm saying? We get, we, we, men, getting, men getting these girls pregnant, but these men ain't sticking around and raising them because, as, oh. she, as she quoted, um, he got a fourth grade reading level. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> well, why'd you sleep with him and give him, a, and give him a baby? Or two, why'd you let him move in your house with you? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let, let, let me point out, let, let me, ahead, let go, me go, roll go. along that one right now because I, I need the level set so that we'll have, we'll, we can all, before anybody start coming out with anecdotal evidence, once again, there are statistics out there for this. I found a statistic and I wish I could present it right now. It says quite clearly that about 20% of men create 80% of the children. 20%, right? So when you say, as a matter of fact, more black men move in with women than women with men. Ladies, y'all all choosing the same dude. And for some strange reason I can't comprehend, y'all all choosing ain't junk brothers. <laughs> Facts. Okay, and, and that's yep. a fact right there. Okay. Like, Seth and I, we both know guys who got kids from multiple girls. And I'm thinking, yes. why do y'all keep yes. sitting with the same dude knowing he already got a kid? Like, if you have one kid and he ain't taking care of that one, 
What makes you think he gonna have take care of your kid and be a better father with yours when he don't take care of his? But he, I will say this: every man I know, every single dude I know that has women with multiple—I mean, uh, more than three baby mamas. Mm-hmm. I'm not even gonna say two. Three baby mamas has been a piece of trash. All right, this is in, this is up to including my own father. Okay, I just. I'm going to be 100 with you. I just met my brother the other day. My brother's 42 years old. I've never met him if I just met him a couple weeks ago. Wow. Okay. Guess how much my father paid to help raise this or put in anything for this dude? Zero. Guess what, though? My father did the same to me. All right? Mm So, women, y'all, 51% of black men don't have any children whatsoever. 64% 64% of black men are in the middle class. How is it that all of y'all seem to be sharing the same little bomb joker? Because normally, if a man has kids, if, when a man has more than two kids with two different women, he probably have six or seven kids with six or seven women. Y'all are all choosing the same bomb dudes. And that's why y'all keep moving in with y'all. Because y'all choosing homosexuals. And you, I know why that you choosing homosexuals. And how about this? You know why women want these bum busted men to have to move in with them? Why is that? Because Seth they out. are in because they are in their masculine. Mm. If you get with a man who has his own thing and is doing what he wants to do and is controlling his life, y'all don't want to act like y'all got no damn sense. So you choose a brother who has to move in with you because that lets you keep control. Mm. I didn't think okay? about that, but that kind of makes sense. That's so. You know, prove me, prove me wrong. That's a good that? one. So <laughs> people, been, people been asking me what does masculinity looks like. Well, ladies and gentlemen, right there was a great example right there. Yeah. Because it, if you're a woman and you have your own stuff together, why would you mess with a guy who's? I mean, I mean, I'm say what it is. Why you mess with a guy who's not on your level or higher than you, right? But then because you lose control. Right. Yeah. Once again, y'all, y'all. Once again, I I will say this part. I understand how women feel like they've never been in control. And throughout history, I'll be honest, you haven't. There, there's no matriarchy anywhere in the world, anywhere in history. Well, Nobody, I mean, technically, right? Not not, mm-hmm. not professionally, but they they actually have been in charge, especially in the okay. black community, if, 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 if we want to jump in that part right there. That. True. I'm, I'm, I'm was, I was going to grab that in a minute. Okay, I'm, I'm waiting. then. Okay. Go ahead. Keep, keep no, reading no, then, because we're going to get to it, well, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to get to it. Okay. So there's been no true patri- matriarchies anywhere in the world. Right. Now, there has been this, quote-unquote, in America, I'm going to call it bastardized version of a matriarch. But this is because the system has systemically pushed the black man down. And I mean on every level. I don't care if it's economic, educational. The system in America has systemically pushed the black man down every chance it got. This isn't amazing. I'm not asking for pity because in the face of that adversity, black men, even though we've, we've been abused the most, even by our women, sadly enough, facts, we still make more than our women because at the end of the day, we are going to be men. We're going to have to keep pushing. So you can save all that. I got my own bag. You have your own bag. Y'all as a whole look pretty bad. You also are, are, we also have to fight for everything we have. And guess what? We've been fighting. So here's the deal. 24% of black women get married. 74% will not. That means only one in four women. Used to be 80%. Now it's it's 25%, 24%. It's dropping. That brothers see what's going on. It used to be that a woman with a child, it didn't matter. Having one or two kids didn't matter. Now, as I said before, and I'll continue to say, the age of the stepfather is over. And you can <laughs> and you can put this on Kevin Samuels and all the other men's channels if you want to, but taking care of another man's kid is a bad deal. It's a bad deal. And guess what, lady? I mean, what they say, upwards of 80% of women have kids? 80% of women have kids. With, and, and of that, that 20, 20% of men are making 80% of the children. 
Do y'all even understand how backwards that is? Very. The same bomb, the same bomb dude that knocked up your cousin knocked up you, or your best friend. Mm-hmm. How, how y'all? How y'all girl? How you got girlfriends who got baby daddy who the same dude? Yeah. This this on y'all, but it's fine. It is what it is. Um. All I'm gonna say is, men have black men have been systemically pushed down for a long time, and we keep struggling to the top. We keep trying to struggle to the top. What do you What do you think's gonna happen when we finally get to where we're supposed to be? And this ain't, I'm not even talking a hundred years down the road. Nah, boo. Time flies right now. Technology is moving faster. And I'm gonna tell y'all something about the economy that I'm pretty sure most of y'all don't even care about. But there was an article on CNN a few days ago that said total. They were like. Some, they predicted total industrial collapse of the free world in the fourth, in the 2040s, 20 years from now, mm. because we are raping the planet of natural resources. Graping. In the face, so raping. I'm sorry, we're we're destroying our own planet. But that's, you know, who cares? You got to have your bag. You got to get your Brazilian butler. But at the same time, when society starts to collapse. I said this before and I'll keep saying it. Women, ladies, you guys never fare well in a, in a, in a catastrophe. Remember the she said she session a few months ago when you couldn't eat, when the COVID hit? It's 20 years. So all you, I'll be in my 60s. I won't even care. <laughs> but uh, for all of y'all right now who enjoying your hot girl summer, you'll be in your 40s in about 20 years or so. Um, Good luck navigating that water because it's coming. And I don't really think y'all planning for it. Right? So let me let me just let me just say this. All right. Um, she did this was posted also. I know you a real man and you hang around other real men, so you may not see this in your community. True, because we don't be letting people into our community. Once we figure out that we need to take the, the RP, once we got to take the RP, we start looking for other men to bring into the RP. So your community of, of available men is shrinking every day. But hold on, hold dude, on. Before, yeah, before ahead, you leave that right there, um, mm-hmm. <laughs> maybe I don't see it right now at this moment. But I've seen those type of guys. We know those guys who move in girls' house and leech yep. off them. So Dude, just because I'm maybe not- married now or not in that, re- in that situation doesn't mean I don't know that it exists. I know it exists. But, you know, the problem is out there that, one, there's no accountability for the ladies. Number two, there's, I mean, right now, there, any of our listeners who's listening, I, I want to challenge you, challenge you this. As a woman, who do you have to listen to that's going to give you information that's going to help benefit you as a woman? Who is your motivational, motherly, feminine woman out there that you can listen to on a daily basis who's going to help you be a better wife, a better mother, a better woman overall? Who is that? Who is that for you? Because we can't tell you about certain things because... You know, you you be very emotional in your feelings because of the situation. But I'm, I, I want to challenge you. Who is your person that you speak to? Who is that woman that's going to give you the good benefit, going to give you the sit-down conversation, teach the real? It means she's going to smack your hand a few times. No, girl, you need to talk to them this way. That's not how women treat men. or men. Who? Because everybody want to talk about what men do. But as far as ladies, who, like, help me here, Seth. Who are they speaking to? Who's keeping them accountable? Well, well brother, I, nobody. Listen, me, me and you both know. Yeah, I'm about to me. I know, I know, know, I know, I know. Dramatic, yeah, is like, yeah, I, it'd be a little dramatic. Yeah. But in the day, it's no one. So nobody. So with that being said, if men have these conversations, we're not having a conversation just to pick on someone. We're having a conversation because it's not being had by nobody. You got these platforms. You have J.D. Pick and Smith on the Red Table Talk. You have all these big shows, but what are they doing for the for the community? Exactly. What are they doing we're, for the community? I, I mean, I'm honestly somebody give me give me a positive female role model right now that's in her feminine. 
put that in. Put do that. But let, let, let me finish, bro. Let me finish. Let me. Let, let me oh, hey, I thought I'm sorry. No, no, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, let me get off this bike. Bro. So, with with that being said, I, I, I do have an anecdotal story about women, men moving in with women. Mm-hmm. Um, I let one of my female friends stay the night one time. <laughs> She didn't leave for three weeks, okay? She wanted to stay at my house. I have never, outside of my mother, let me state that, I have never lived under a woman's roof outside of my mother. I, I, ain't, I ain't never felt the need to live, move in with somebody. This is my house, my rules. If you're going to be a man, you pay the cost to be the boss. But listen to this. Right? Hey, listen, right, now shoot. And listen, I actually lived, I actually moved in with a woman, right? Right? Mm-hmm. My name wasn't Elise, right? So I did that, but guess what? I still pay all the bills, though. <laughs> Even though it wasn't my name, I still paid the bills, well, though. Let's be clear you there. Know what I, you know what I guarantee happened? If you moved in with her and your name wasn't on that lease, I guarantee you she told you to pack your stuff and get out of her house. Oh, yeah, she At did. Least one. She did one time, and guess what? After that, I never moved in with a woman ever again. Never yeah. again. Because it, I've seen. So I've hold, seen hold, hold on, Seth. Hold on, hold on, Seth. Hold on, sure. Seth. That, see, right there, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to give you an example of what happens when you give women power. Let me be clear yep. here. I moved in with a woman, paid all, all the bills. My name wasn't on the lease. We got an argument, whatever the case may be, but she told me to get out her house. See? Mm-hmm. So you want to know what it looks like to give, uh, give you power? You get a power and you abuse it. I just told you. Because the person I live with, I was never laying on no bills. We had food. Mm-hmm. Everything was good. We got an argument. She said, get out of my house. Oh, okay. Yep. Never happened again. Mm-hmm. It never happened yep. again. I'll tell you that. <laughs> and I tell my, mm-hmm. my young fellas, don't move in no girl's house unless your name's on the lease. I don't care what? if you pay the bills or not. If your name's not on the lease, any given moment she can tell you to get out. Wait, wait. I want to add to that anecdotal evidence mm-hmm. that I've had, that I've seen, not that I've experienced, but I've seen every single woman. This includes my mother and women in my family, to friends, to relatives, all of this. Every single woman that has ever let somebody move into their house has eventually told them to pack their stuff and leave. Mm. If you move in with a woman, because the power that comes with being able to kick somebody out of your house is a drug. And I have never seen I've never seen a woman avoid taking that drug. They love control and power. Even if they are, even if they look stupid using, they love it. Mm-hmm. You you don't never put yourself in a position for a woman to tell you to get out of her junk. So all them bomb dudes that y'all dating, that right there, you only date bombs because real dudes not gonna give you a chance to tell them to get out of their house. Facts. They ain't sure ain't gonna say it to me twice. Facts. I heard you the first time. <laughs> heard you the first time. You don't gotta repeat yourself. I heard you the first time. You do, you'll never repeat that to me twice. Facts. Right. And if I. And I would rather be homeless than to live under somebody's roof who can tell me to pack my junk and get out just because she was having a bad day at work or her hormones out of control. Exactly. Y'all don't think straight. Y'all don't think straight. And so, that, I mean, that's, go ahead. Continue, Seth. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Just, I mean, I think, let me see. I mean, I just want to read it. Okay. Yeah. Make sure you finish it out. So this, so at the end, after, after telling us what we did wrong, I will say that it turned positive. It said, I know you're a real man and you hang around with other real men, so you may not see this in your community. But y'all are rare, and since the majority of the patriarchy do not perform the job suspected of the title head of house, they no longer need to be at the top. Perhaps it is time to try the uh, matri- matriarchy. Like, that that might have been tried to be a little positive spin, but that was all cap. All yeah, right. because mar- listen, because married men ain't safe neither. No, no, ma- being married sucks. Right, I you're mean, not right. you're not you safe know. as well. So, we, we, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're not safe at all. I got a friend right now who's married is going through a separation right now, and, and, and it's and he's going through it, Bruh. right? Because Bruh. she got power. It goes back to the power. See, this yep. is what. See, once again, let's bring let me give you an example. Of what happened? Give woman power, right? You know, I'm, I hear this all the time on the clubhouses, on the real difference of how you feel, any show, clubhouse, whatever platform I'm on, having a conversation with people. 
Well, if men will take care of their kids, blah, 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 blah. Listen, you need to understand this, ladies and gentlemen. Women were given power in the late 80s, if not late 70s, and 80s, that if you keep a man out the house, there's more benefit for you to keep the black man out the house. I'm going to say that again. Back, I, I, er, late 70s, early 80s, the mm-hmm. government gave y'all more power. To, if you get the man out the house, there's more benefit that you'll get from them. And let's go mm-hmm. back. Let's go bef- wait, back wait. before that. Wait, wait, wait. I want to I add one more thing. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Said, they gave you the power. You kick the men out, we'll give you a house and a check. But you got to keep having children to maintain your benefit. So they turn, they kicked you out of the house and then turned you into a baby making factory with no male figure. That's it right there. Right. So, so now, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, 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 it's fine. So if we go before that, before the woman had the power to get men out and get more, more beneficial. So we won't talk about the, let's say, 60s, 70s, 50s, 60s, 70s. We'll talk about those years, right? Well, mm-hmm. guess what? Men were still having sex back then. Men were mm-hmm. still having baby mamas. What is the song? Yep. Wherever he lay his hat, his ha- where he lay his hat was his home. Guys had mm-hmm. multiple families. Guys were taking care of multiple families back then. Guess what? They still did what they had to do. If a woman back in those times took her kids and left her husband, right? The police, the police would go and track her down, either make her come back with the kids, or they just take the kids and bring them to the dead because dad was a breadwinner. See, y- yeah. y'all didn't know that part. They'll give the kids to the dead because he was a breadwinner. Think about today's now. Who makes the most money in a relationship? Most of the time, the men. But who gets the kids? The woman. How does that make mm-hmm. any sense? So the guy who makes the most money, right, doesn't get the kids, mm-hmm. so goes to the mother, and guess what the mother do? She put the guy on child support because she needs assistance because she can't afford to take the kids by herself. So why yep. the kids stay with their dad? Now, this is not absolute because there's some bad dads and there's some bad mothers. But the point I'm trying to make is this. Majority of the time in come divorce and separations, it should go to the person who makes the more money, which is nine out of ten times the father. Exactly. And then if we go back, let's jump back to the 50s, 60s, 70s, right? Listen, men back then were taking care of kids that weren't theirs. I, I, I'm, I'm a living experience of that. I had a grandfather that wasn't my grandfather. Meaning that he wasn't my mom's dad, but he was still granddad to all my mom's, my grandma's kids. Yep. And guess what he do? He went to work, did what he had to do, came home, took care of the family. But see, now yep. it changes. Yep. Men don't want to do that anymore. Because it's, bro, men, men would have wanted to do it if women hadn't started making babies for the fun of it, bro. You know what I'm saying? Come on, man. It's one thing to have one baby dad. I'll give you that part. You know what I'm saying? You was with a man that didn't work out. You really thought it would work out. You planned on being a wife. Now, they baby trapping you, bro. We ain't have no relationship for me to even justify taking care of somebody else's kid. We ain't got no relationship. Facts. And, and I mean, honestly, if I take you out because you got kids at home, and then I got to buy your kids Happy Meals because you can't afford it, you need to go back to your baby daddy. I don't think I should be in this picture right now. Because I don't think I should buy nobody no Happy Meal that I just met. But, you know, choices have consequences. <laughs> so with all that being said, ladies and gentlemen, and ladies out there, you know, when you said let y'all be in charge, we have seen what it has done so far with y'all being in charge. And there's really quite no real benefit of y'all guys being in charge. It's absolutely scary. That it, it actually is scary because mm-hmm. y'all can't show me where y'all are, where you are in charge and something it turned out successful. You can't give me an example of a su- successful community. You know, so I'm not saying yeah. you got to build your own country, but show me a community that women led did X, Y, Z, and how that working out. Yeah. How's it working out for the, the the marriages? How's it working out for the community? How's it working out for across the board? How's it working out? Don't don't even show me a whole country. Show me one company. Show me a company that's Fortune 500 that was female founded and created and ran and led. That's Fortune 500. Selling selling eyelashes don't count as a Fortune 500 business. 
doing nails don't count as it. Employ a hundred thousand people. Do that. Have a have a build from the ground up and have a billion dollar income. That would be impressive. Jeff Bezos, anybody? Bill Gates, anybody? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, hey, even even Russell Simmons, for Christ's sake. You know what I'm saying? Build from the ground up. Start from zero and build up till you have people listen, under you who have a living to make. And, and, and then and, tell me who you need to try to make charge. I'm with you. And technically, I'll kind of, and I say kind of, I'll give you Oprah, but still, she didn't create her TV network. That she, I mean, she created a network after the fact, but she was on, a, what, ABC or NBC, a network mm-hmm. show. So she made them billions of dollars. Mind you, for them to pay for for them to pay her billions and millions of dollars, they was making triple that offer in the first place. You understand Doesn't what I'm saying? Matter. So that's she like her own network and threw it away instead of anyway. We not going. All right, 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 right. But, but I'm trying to say, you know, if they try to say, well, Oprah did this. Okay, but what what community did Oprah did? You know, like, you know it, what? Because think about this. Oh, real quick, real quick. <laughs> Tyler Perry. He he, he can't he, he, out the mud, right? But what did he do? He created yep. a, um, a black uh, not studio. What do you say again? Yeah, movie studio. Yeah, movie he created his own movie studio where they film mm-hmm. stuff right now. Billion dollar brand. So Marvel so stuff, brand. everything you be seeing, be, be filmed here in Atlanta, Georgia at <laughs> yep. at, at his spot. So, that, so, I so mean, you think about Oprah. Just, yeah, she opened up so. schools, but outside of that, what else? And you technically, she, she, matter of fact, she didn't open the schools up here in America. She opened them in Africa. Let, let, let me correct myself because there's always anecdotal evidence. You write right there. Not one. Don't name one. Give me three. Give me three. Because you, we can argue about Oprah all day. Choose somebody else. I mean, off the top of my head, I can easily just say Puffy. I ain't got a light Puffy, but Puffy did it. Mm-hmm. Master P did it, mm-hmm. and Russell Simmons did it. That's just three dudes in the hip hop industry. Did, didn't Dre do the same thing? Yeah. With aftermath. Yeah. But how many how many female led rap labels are there at all? Mm. See, that ain't me throwing no stone. That's Damn. saying when you want to the matriarch with what women. Here's what I say, and now and I'm gonna drop the mic and shut up. When women say it's time to start a matriarchy. You don't want to build anything. You want us to give you what men have already built and let you run. You ain't even trying to say, let me start something from the ground up and make it great. You want a handout. That's what the matriarchy is to me. You want a damn handout. Give us what you've already created because why would I go through the work of building it from the ground up when a man has already did the work? That's what I hear when I say when I hear matriarch, and I'm dropping the mic. I'm shutting up. Yeah, that that was definitely a mic drop. <laughs> that was definitely a mic drop, and technically, I don't got I don't got nothing else to follow up on that one. So, yeah. I'm gonna post this tonight. <laughs> so, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, this is the Chop Team. This is Twin Zinc and Jeff the Dark Child, and this is the Chop Team. So. We, we appreciate you with the comments. Keep them coming. Uh, I'm going to get this yeah. thing together, but we definitely like to have you on the show. So anyone oh, yeah, listening, if you want to be on the show and have this conversation live, we would love to have, especially a woman. We love, I mean, we have anybody, but we'll definitely love to have a yeah. woman on the show, right? Yeah, prove us wrong. Right, yeah, right. And, and the only thing we ask you is that don't come with your feelings. So you can't, you can't have an argument saying, I feel this. This is going to drop that right there. That's the only requirement. You cannot say, I feel. That's the only thing we ask you not to do. Don't speak from feelings. <laughs> See, you can say my opinion or the facts are this, the numbers is this, but don't speak with I feel. Just can't yep. do it. It's not going to work. But uh, and, and, Go ahead, Seth. Go ahead, go Seth. Ahead. I'm, I'm done because I'm you know me. <laughs> you better go off. So, <laughs> follow us on well, IG, the Chat Team. <laughs> Subscribe to our YouTube channel as well, the Chat Team. Uh, Twitter. Uh, email us at thechatteam at gmail dot com. Uh, just let us know what's going on. You can follow also Seth the Dark Child. He's on IG as well. Go ahead and flood his inbox up, hate mail and everything. Yeah. What you want to do? Go ahead, let him know how you feel. And Twins Inc., you know to find good. me. <laughs> Bring the smoke. I'm good. <laughs>
<laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, we out. <laughs>